Here's a question for you SCP Explained fans. What do the following items have in common? A romance novel about long-dead KFC founder Colonel Harlan Sanders, a 27-pound bucket of mac and cheese, radioactive uranium ore, and a wallet that looks like a pair of tidy whities with skid marks. You can buy them all on Amazon. Amazon. It's one of the world's largest online retailers, famous for its wide range of products and services. It's generally pretty reliable delivery, and it's appalling treatment of its workers. It's also really, really weird. Seeing as almost anyone can set up a store on Amazon, and the fact that it's one of the most popular storefronts in the world, it's natural that a huge number of lovable nutcases would set up shop and ply their super bizarre trade. There's such a breadth of weird items you can buy on Amazon that it seems almost anomalous. And nobody knows this better than one of the SCP Foundation's greatest and most eccentric researchers, Dr. Jack Bright. What does Dr. Bright have to do with weird Amazon purchases? It's a hell of a story, and it begins, like many stories at the SCP Foundation do, with SCP-682, the hard-to-destroy reptile, reaching containment and killing a hell of a lot of people. This latest containment breach actually comes as a result of what one might professionally call a major boo-boo by junior researcher Elliot Hayberg. Sadly for young Dr. Hayberg, this actually happened on the first day of his new research assignment on the SCP-682 termination project, which seemed about as likely to bear fruit as attempts to find pots full of leprechaun gold at the end of nearby rainbows, of course carried out by MTF Omega-420, also known as the Luck of the Irish, but that's another video entirely. Needless to say, as he helped the janitorial staff mop up all the blood while a group of guards carried a heavily injured 682 back to its cell, Dr. Hayberg felt pretty bummed about this whole situation. Of course, the loss of life caused by Hayberg's cross-test was a tragedy, but he also felt terrible for letting his bosses down on his first day. Aside from quite literally dying or being given a fate worse than death by some horrifying anomaly, this was really the worst day to start a first day at the SCP Foundation. Dr. Bright, a Foundation veteran by anyone's definition, noticed that Dr. Hayberg was looking upset and decided to go and offer some sage advice, while also taking an opportunity to tell one of his trademark tall tales. Was it a true story? Who knows? But it was certainly true that it was a story. Don't beat yourself up. Dr. Bright said, giving Dr. Hayberg a comforting, fatherly pat on the shoulder. 682 gets out and kills a bunch of people every month. It's no biggie. I've made way bigger mistakes than this. Compared to the Amazon incident, pff, this is nothing. The advice immediately made Dr. Hayberg feel a little better, but he was also immediately curious, replying, The Amazon incident? I can't say I'm familiar with that. Almost as though Dr. Bright had only comforted Dr. Hayberg in the first place to give himself an opportunity to tell his story, he sat the junior researcher down and immediately began to spin his yarn. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, Dr. Bright was having one of his rare, slow days. He sat around his office, occasionally spinning around on his office chair and contemplating life, the universe, and everything. The funny thing about being immortal is that it makes your time utterly worthless. Death is a fantastic motivator because it means that no matter how many times you say to yourself, eh, I'll just do it later, you know that someday there will be no more later. It starts a fire under you and gets you moving. But when you're immortal like Dr. Bright, thanks to his SCP-963 medallion, there's always going to be a later to foist your problems onto until the sun expands and devours the earth in billions of years as time. Today, however, Dr. Bright decided to spend his time looking into the rates of containment breaches at Site-19 and pondering how exactly he could reduce these numbers. Site-19 had impeccable security and a wide range of elite containment specialists, but while these factors can help address containment breaches when they happen, Dr. Bright wanted to instead treat the cause of containment breaches rather than treating them symptomatically. In other words, rather than preventing successful breaches from anomalies, Dr. Bright wanted to figure out how to stop anomalies from wanting to breach containment in the first place. That's when he had a brainwave. A few weeks earlier, he'd read an article about the revolutionary Norwegian prison system, which used a high quality of life in prison with a great degree of inmate enrichment to slash recidivism rates. This, to Dr. Bright, seemed like a fascinating idea. 
If he gave a bunch of the more problematic sentient and sapient anomalies better enrichment, then perhaps they'd be too busy enjoying themselves to want to break out and cause chaos elsewhere. And Dr. Bright had an ingenious way of finding the right enrichment for the many anomalies under Site-19's care and even beyond. He'd give them computers or smartphones with fixed access to Amazon.com, where they could build up their wish lists and give him a starting point for what kind of objects and activities might be ideal enrichment for each of the anomalies in question. As far as Dr. Bright figured, there would be no way that his new plan could possibly go wrong. All he needed to do was get started. So over the next several days, Dr. Bright devoted himself to giving a cavalcade of anomalies devices locked on the Amazon app and told them to spend some time browsing, adding any items that they thought they might like to the wish list for later consideration. It was the exact kind of deranged genius that only a maverick like Jack Bright could muster, and in the days and hours that followed, reams of fascinating data rolled in. Huge numbers of anomalies picked incredibly bizarre products for their wish lists, and in seeing which anomalies picked, he got an unprecedented look into the minds of some of the Foundation's most infamous inmates. And of course, we're going to tell you about some of the craziest ones. What kind of monsters would we be to play those cards close to our chest? These are some of the weirdest Amazon products that the different anomalies added to their wish lists. And we're sorry to inform you, it's gonna get even wilder after that. First, to bring things full circle, there's SCP-682, who was temporarily dragged out of the acid tank he's permanently melting in and given an iPhone. After eating the first three iPhones and throwing the next several at guards at such incredible speeds that it caused considerable injuries, he finally, begrudgingly, agreed to play along. After scrolling for a considerable amount of time, 682 added bacon strip bandages, which he intended to gift to guards and researchers to make them taste better. He also added a taco sleeping bag for the exact same reasons, and the exotic meats beef jerky, because honestly, Foundation staff and dead cows get a little samey after a while. And yes, before you ask, everything featured in this video is an incredibly weird, real Amazon product. We honestly kind of wish we were kidding. Next, Dr. Bright started collecting the data from SCP-106's wishlist. The deranged and sadistic old man seemed to enjoy nothing but doling out pain to his victims, but given the seemingly limitless purview of Amazon, he went a little nuts. First, he added the Hatch Your Own Spiders Terrarium, perhaps believing that filling his pocket dimension with thousands of spiders would make it an even more delightfully miserable place for his victims. As a delicious snack fit for an evil old anomalous lunatic, he decided to add some canned edible smoked rattlesnake. And of course, he threw on a human head stress ball, so he could simulate torturing a human head without actually needing to access one. Dr. Bright was fascinated by the bizarre spectrum of results so far, so he next moved on to the Amazon wishlist of SCP-076-2, also known as Abel, with whom Dr. Bright had a long-standing grudge. Abel, upon resurrection, had to be restrained by a massive amount of industrial-strength straps, typically used to hold elephants in place during surgery. After a solid 48 hours of relentless struggling, they were finally able to get Abel to dictate his wishlist picks to a Foundation researcher at a nearby computer. His first pick was, predictably, a Chef's Choice Trizer XV Edge Select Professional Electric Knife Sharpener, for completely obvious reasons. He then added a book called Weapons, A Pictorial History, for some light reading around his favorite subject. And of course, he also added a vast collection of temporary tattoos because it'd been a while since he got his last badass battle tat, but didn't quite feel ready to commit to something at this time. Next came SCP-2273, Major Alexei Belotrov, an alternate history's Russian militant trapped in a biomechanical weapon of war. He first added an oversized bread pillow, which made him nostalgic for the Russian breadline days of his childhood. Next, he threw on a self-sustaining aquatic ecosphere. After all, in his native timeline, almost all life was wiped out by nuclear war. It brought him great comfort to have a handheld reminder that life still goes on somewhere. And also, he treated himself to a handheld pump-operated fart vacuum, because whenever he farted in his exosuit and was just stuck there with it, it was a truly hellish experience. Of course, Dr. Bright couldn't resist trying out his experiment with SCP-049, 
also known as the Plague Doctor, one of the SCP Foundation's more intellectual captives. Predictably, the first item added to his wish list was a 157-piece set of stainless steel surgical tools. Next, in a fun twist of fate, the Plague Doctor decided to add a realistic rubber pigeon mask to his wish list. When Dr. Bright later questioned him about this, he said, Well, dear boy, this is one of the only masks I've ever seen that will actually fit over my head. He then added an insulated tote bag with the words, Human Organ for Transplant printed on the side. Funnily enough, he'd probably be the only one to actually use it for human organs. Next came SCP-029, also known as the Daughter of Shadows. Dr. Bright was particularly eager to include this extremely violent Keter class in his new experiment, because she attempted escape from containment constantly, so it would save a lot of money and lives to keep her pacified. When she stopped trying to strangle the staff member giving her the iPhone, she first selected a skull-shaped makeup brush holder, which satisfied two of her greatest passions, death and being adored. She also bought an instructional book called A Girl's Guide to Femdom and a Blu-ray copy of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Next came the kind but haunted SCP-073, also known as Kane. The first addition to his wish list was a pair of flip-flops with artificial grass along the sole to simulate the sensation of walking on grass. Seeing as Kane can't walk on real grass without killing it, these grassy sandals would naturally give him some comfort. Next, he added the instructional book, Dancing for Cats, so he could practice his dance moves with Josie the Half-Cat, aka SCP-529. And in a bizarre turn of events, he bought 30 pieces of fake garlic, so he could fantasize about touching garlic without it immediately dying. Next came SCP-811, the sweet but simple-minded humanoid amphibian known as the Swamp Woman. Would her Amazon wishlist also be esoterically wholesome like the anomaly herself? First, she added a stuffed blobfish plush, commenting, Ah, him so sweet, upon clicking add to wishlist. She next added a novelty yodeling pickle, the mere idea of which brought her a great deal of amusement. She also bought a talking hamster toy, largely due to being extremely lonely most days in containment, and even being willing to tolerate a pretend rodent with a preset selection of phrases as a social substitute. Next came the disembodied brain of the mad inventor Jeremy Valdez, also known to the SCP Foundation as SCP-2099. As soon as the terminally scatterbrained, um, brain made up his mind, Dr. Bright reviewed the list. First, he added a book called The Brain That Changes Itself. Next, he nabbed some pretty dubious brain supplements that the Amazon reviews suggest give the user rather violent diarrhea. And bafflingly, a dill pickle flavored tube of lip balm. No, we don't know how Dr. Valdez intends to use that either. Dr. Bright also gave an iPhone locked onto the Amazon app to Dr. Clef, who isn't an anomaly contained by the SCP Foundation, but was still bizarre and enigmatic enough that Dr. Bright was eager to psychoanalyze him via his Amazon wishlist selections. First, he selected a book entitled Shotguns, A Comprehensive Guide. Next, he threw on an extensive ukulele repair kit, and of course, a pooping pooches calendar. Stay classy, Dr. Clef. Dr. Bright performed this exact experiment on hundreds of different anomalies, gaining what he believed to be invaluable data that could help enrich the containment of so many of them, and thus prevent countless containment breaches. This had been such a brilliant plan. Dr. Bright felt beyond pleased with himself, until he received an incredibly angry-sounding phone call from O5-1. Jack, you overhyped piece of gaudy jewelry. What the hell have you done this time? Dr. Bright was deeply confused as to why the O5 Council were so angry at him. He'd been performing one of the most benign experiments in the history of the SCP Foundation. He hadn't even needed to kill a single D-Class, so why all the vitriol? Moments later, though, Dr. Bright would discover the horrifying error of his ways. You see, when Dr. Bright had given these hundreds of anomalies iPhones with location services enabled and the Amazon app open, he'd also forgotten to log out of his account which, incidentally, was also twined to his SCP Foundation Expenses account. In essence, the various anomalies of the SCP Foundation had ordered tens of thousands of dollars worth of the most bizarre Amazon products imaginable, and they were heading straight for Site-19. The waste of money would be bad enough, but the true threat was far more grave. This little mistake had exposed the location of the SCP Foundation's biggest containment site to one of its most powerful enemies. And by the looks of things, he was already on his way. 
Not long after the fateful order was made, a fleet of Amazon-branded attack helicopters choked the skies. While fleets of Amazon ground vehicles approached Site-19 in tight formation, mobile task forces and guards converged around the perimeter of the site, hoping to fend off the coming attack. But even they were overwhelmed by the sheer extent of the force coming towards them. Dr. Bright, horrified at the chaos he'd wrought, ran to the front lines outside the site, ready to take on the new threat with the Foundation's finest. That's when the line of vehicles came to a stop, and the helicopters continued circling in the sky. Doors opened and heavily armed soldiers in tactical gear began to spill out. It was an army like nothing Dr. Bright or the Foundation had ever seen before. The army split like the Red Sea, and their great and terrible leader stepped forwards, muscles rippling out from the sleeves of his overpriced Hugo Boss vest. It was him, CEO Entrepreneur, born in 1964, Jeffrey Bezos. One of the world's most ruthless businessmen, with biceps that could bust skulls like he busted unions. And little known fact, he's a man with close ties to the incredibly wealthy group of interest, Marshall Carter and Dark Limited. He was here for one reason and one reason only, to acquire the SCP Foundation and add it to his world-devouring conglomerate of evil. Don't worry, Dr. Bright, he said with a devious smirk. Not much will change under my management. I already treat my employees like D-class personnel. <laughs> but Dr. Bright would never see the SCP Foundation taken over by such a heartless, self-interested Lex Luthor wannabe. He challenged Jeff Bezos to a one-on-one -on -one battle to decide the fate of the SCP Foundation, seeing as it was his fault and his fault alone that the location of Site-19 had been revealed to Bezos and his underpaid minions. Bezos agreed to the terms, and the battle began. Dr. Bright put up his dukes and prepared to tussle. Bezos, however, flexed his muscles so inhumanly hard that his vest and shirt exploded into shreds, revealing his surprisingly swole physique underneath. Little did Dr. Bright know, Bezos had augmented his body with nanomachines to massively increase his strength and durability. He was now a combatant of truly anomalous power. How would Dr. Bright possibly win? The two ran towards each other across the battlefield outside of Site-19, both roaring in animal rage, ready for this clash of the titans that would determine the fate of the SCP Foundation forever. Long story short, Dr. Bright said to Dr. Hayberg, who at this point was thoroughly confused, everything was okay in the end. See, it's important not to dwell on our mistakes. Uh, thanks, Dr. Bright, I guess, he said, unsure if anything Dr. Bright just said to him was true, or if it was all some complex free associating fantasy he made up on the spot. Dr. Bright gave him a playful punch on the shoulder. Anytime, rookie, anytime. Now go check out SCP-963. What would you do if you were immortal like Dr. Jack Bright? and Dr. Bright for President, SCP-4444 Bush vs. Gore, for more wacky misadventures from the immortally silly Dr. Bright.